So I'm not, you know, I don't like Joe Rogan. I don't listen to Joe Rogan. I don't, I've never really listened to the podcast. I've seen like clips here and there. I know he's a comedian by trade, mm-hmm. but I, I didn't, I never thought about if it was good or bad. I just thought about it as something that's popular because of the pot. Like he's so popular that whatever he's going to do is also right. going to be popular. It's such a subjective art yeah. form that we yeah. don't know if he's funny or not funny, but we could tell that he's successful at it. And he's he making sold out money. two nights at the fabulous Fox theater, which is not a joke. It's nice. It was probably 3000 people. Yeah. Three, 4,000 people. And the crowd, we can start with the crowd. <laughs> Let's start with the crowd. Dude, I saw one of them last night uh, when I got back to the hotel yeah. last night. There was just people standing on the sidewalk, like drunk people talking to each other. And they're like, one guy just screamed to the other guy, Joe Rogan, am I right? And then they high-fived because they had seen each other at the Rogan show the night before. And they were bonding over. And these were two people that didn't have two teeth to rub together, carrying a 30-pack of Coors back to their hotel. Because the, the, So that nasty shit the the style of person at this sh- i mean the thing is i'm i'm kind of i guess not exclusively but i'm perfectly suited to speak on the types because it's southern archetypes mm-hmm. so there's you're a scholar on the subject i'm a scholar on the subject so there's kind of like the guy that's like 32 and doing pretty well for himself could lose 15 or 20 mm-hmm He's dressed like okay. You know, he's got like a collared shirt on. It's tucked in, but it's all in that like kind of light redneck style. Right. He he plays golf, but it's day beers. Yeah, hundred percent day beer guy. And he's got like a girlfriend who's overdressed. There's a lot of women in the building. A lot of women that were wearing like freakum dresses to yeah. see Joe Rogan at a theater. Mm-hmm. And then there's there's also there, then there was the full on like. I literally came from the job site. My car hearts are dirty. I got my sunglasses sitting on the back of my neck. <laughs> like, like I have drywall in my hair kind of guy. Uh-huh. I only have time to go pick up a couple tall boys on exactly. the way, drink them on the way in the car. Uh-huh. We'll make it for the second act kind of Actually, thing. every single person there except us drank on the way there in a car that they were driving. <laughs> that's what I would say, the crowd. Mm-hmm. That's the crowd. But then there's also the like kind of upper middle class I probably job site foreman is what we I call probably them. live thirty minutes outside the city. Like I look a little more maintained. My chick looks a little more maintained. My truck's a little more expensive. The mm-hmm. lift's a little higher. I'm the most racist. Yeah, my flannel shirt. It's, a, it's I'm wearing my formal flannel. It's a formal flannel. It is. It's buttoned. I'm not letting any any chest show. You know, it's, it's an untuck it Brixton. Yeah, it's little a, number. It's, I got my untuck it with my Brixton. I got on. this one dry clean. So the the crowd was kind of what. I would expect, but they were also it's it was quite friendly. There was a lot of not to us, of course, because they could tell we were the op, but they were like there was a lot of intermingling. We were the two F words in the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the 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 seats were good. We had good seats. <laughs> yeah, they were. I don't. If I'm gonna, That's, get, you can only you can take credit for that. I, I I'm not gonna go to something unless I have, am a VIP or I'm gonna I'm gonna pony up for the good seats. Mm-hmm. And. I'm just I'm going into this a little bit like oh this will be funny like whatever it'll be something for us to talk about like I don't I don't really care. It's not going to be no Cat Williams level stand up. It's not going to be earthquake shit but yeah. I'll I'll sit through a couple well, hours get some laughs it'll be fine. Yeah, it's fine. And I have to say buy some creatine on the way out. Exactly. Yeah, I got some CB4. That I have to say this was one of the worst <laughs> things I have ever seen in my adult life. And I've seen Bro, I've seen screamo bands in basements in the suburbs. Mm-hmm. I've seen sports. I've been to a lot of live events. I, we, you and I combined have probably been to more live events than most people. You just know the amount of, the, of bullshit I've seen? Just the choices that we've made in our lives have led us to spend our money and time seeing things performed live, whether it's music, comedy, sp- whatever it is. Magicians. Magicians. The performing arts in general. This Joe Rogan stand-up, the Sacred Clown Tour... <laughs> I'm not exaggerating, guy. And we left like we gave him 30 minutes. We um, we almost sat through half. We almost got through half of it. It was so deeply unfunny, in a way that like I know I say stand ups unfunny, but I can watch something on Netflix. I can usually crack a smile. Mm-hmm. You know, like oh that that's pretty good, or like oh that delivery. You know, I can find hope. You you can watch the new Nick Kroll special, get a couple chuckles out of I it. I did watch the first 20 minutes. That awful as well, but we'll get to that. And it was he had a couple good lines. It was just truly awful in a way that's like i i guess i guess what it is is that the 
I because he tries to talk about kind of like important subjects on his podcast and that he's known for being on the wrong side of history with every kind of mm-hmm. everything basically mm-hmm. which i think i would agree with he is on the wrong side of history with basically everything mm-hmm. ivermectin give it a try i don't know <laughs> and but seems to work fine for me this was more of like it was like he was a 15 year old yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there was no inte- there was no attempt at it being intelligent in any way and maybe he's maybe I mean I think he's I don't think he's dumb. They I were think, all pandering a little bit for yeah. the southern crowd compared to doing a show at Madison Square Garden or sure. something, but by and large that's his normal operating speed for his his target demo live. But it's like it's like it, it's it's not even like his preoccupation with gay mm. is insane because it's not it's little boozy level yeah it's like not funny but it's also not like introspective or interest it's just literally like duh it's just um it's just sort of milk toast frustration yeah. at the matter and, yeah. and typically as a comedian you're like here's the thing i noticed maybe it bothers me maybe it doesn't but now i'm going to make fun out of it yeah versus like trans divers trans weight li- oh. it was just it's just why like, do you care about trans divers so much it's, bro? it's him being like the class like gay guy i mean must rule bro you know <laughs> i'm not homophobic at all i think gay guys are awesome they get to like get their dick sucked like every day <laughs> if you ask me i like to get dick sucked too <laughs> it's just and it's just he's he's saying all these deeply and they're not even it's not even like the stuff is so offensive to me. I'm just like this is just a swing and a miss. Well, like what it, I think it is is he's so old and he's been doing it for so long. He's like mid 50s and he has stopped trying new things. So he's just he's stuck. So in his mind this this material is still progressive because when he was doing this bit about wouldn't it be funny if I said like gay, being gay was like actually good in, yeah, in like 1997 yeah. when he had that epiphany of like I'm going to flip it and be crazy subversive and this is actually going to be kind of punk rock what I'm doing here but in 2022 it's just it's it's 35 year old logic you know it's like you like you said it felt like a 15 year old proselytizing to a crowd of 15 year olds because mentally that's where they're at it's also the or crowd emotionally more so it's also the it, it reminds me of if you go to like a like a 2000s radio band show and the crowd is all people have have not discovered new music since they were in high school yeah exact same people mm-hmm. they haven't had a, a new thought since high school yeah set in their ways it's just like but it's it's all very like i mean everybody was having a good time and i think he was I think people were liking... I mean, people were laughing. No, people were giving him standing ovations when he said, you know what I miss? I wish... I, oh, the F word, man. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Man, we can't say the F word anymore. He said, we... That had nothing to do with gay people. <laughs> like, really? Bro, it inherently has <laughs> everything to do with gay... There's no escaping that. Like, yeah. whether you whether you want to say it or not, you got to admit the origin. I mean, it's not great. And like, I know you could say it's a pile of sticks, but let's be real. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's just not. We're, we're all on our journey of of unlearning and progress and breaking the walls down of, uh, you know, all the stuff that's inside of us. And some people are further along that journey than others. We're definitely not leading that pack personally, you and I. Sure. Just because, you know, based on our age, but like he's he's so far in the back. He's so far behind and he's like, "Hey, I'm so far behind and so are most people." I mean, I think he's So th- I'm going to be your person. Well, it's just one of those things where he's tapped into something clearly and he's making millions of dollars off of this stuff because most people feel not most people, but a, a lot of people feel the same way or at least find the same things funny. Yeah, he was he was saying it was, it was weird because he it reminded me of literally like my friends in high school who would, you know, basically when you haven't had any like male bonding or you haven't had like um, emotional growth enough to mm-hmm. call your friend in high school and wish them a happy birthday or just say like happy birthday or love you, bro, or whatever it is. You couldn't do that without saying the F word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and had he, to like you had to kind of like 
Happy yes. birthday, fag. Yeah, you had you, know, you had to like, like that. You couldn't show any emotion without having something like right. It was sort of your way of saying, like, if you're a straight guy, you would use the f word as a way to, you know, recognize that we're we're in a vulnerable situation, emotional situation and I need to right make sure now. You know that I know. Yes, and that was sort of like the way that straight people use that word with other straight people. And it's a thing that most people, our generation, stopped doing in high school, you know, in the teenage yeah. years. And now the current generation stops doing it when they're three or they don't even ever say but the my, F word. My... But with Rogan, he's a 55-year-old guy who is whining and complaining about not being able to call his other millionaire friend and say and not be able to say happy birthday fag it's crazy i think that the the thing is i wonder i think that i think maybe that crowd and maybe i'm giving them more credit than they deserve but i feel like there's also an element of it where this is a night where they can come together and like laugh about this stuff Mm -hmm. because they can't do that in their lives because they they know it would be detrimental Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like this guy that has like a you know like a clan meeting yeah literally though it's like i can come here i can laugh at this shit and everybody's like oh the podcaster joe rogan oh yeah yeah he's controversial that's crazy Mm -hmm. and all these people are definitely like republican like you know trump vibe for sure Mm -hmm. but i also don't think these people actually like hate gay people or actually racist that's not the vibe no 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 they just (laughs) um they they probably all have people of color in their lives and gay people and trans people and their friends and family yeah. groups they're around it they're okay with it they don't hate any of those people they just haven't learned the cosmopolitan skill set of being socially normal yeah. around those people and talking about people as if they're just equally like one of us yeah, they're like yeah, i know yeah. they exist but like I don't know yeah. how to do it. It was a very strange because it didn't seem. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I but just, also I'm saying cosmopolitan, but it's, it's it's the mirror image of if we were to go see Joe Rogan in Orange County, same shit. Everyone would look the same, dress yeah. the same, talk the same, have the same everything. I don't feel. Um, I'm glad that we went. I think I I always wrote him off as just like, why do people care about this so much? Like, who gives a shit? Mm-hmm. And I still say, why do people give a shit? Because there's nothing entertaining or necessarily interesting about it all. But I do think that like hearing, hearing some bro three rows back scream, fuck Fauci a pro, a, for no reason. Purely like, out of context. That wasn't being talked about. That he's, wasn't. He's even. doing a bit about, you know, like rear naked chokes or like <laughs> how crazy it is. Like when a grizzly bear, have you ever seen a, how big a grizzly bear's paw is? It's so huge. It's like bigger yeah. than your head. And some guy just, just you hear crickets chirping in the back of the crowd and roast 78 B. Fuck Fauci. And it was just like, I love making fun of Fauci. It's fucking hilarious. But screaming that. Uh, with with no context in 2022 months after he's retired like, bro, months this, after he's appeared in this the news is like that says a lot you know mm-hmm. but i don't know if i mean i wonder but if, in his, in that person's mind he's been what, waiting to scream fuck fauci so just so that joe rogan hears it yeah he doesn't have to respond he doesn't have to say who said that come here go give him a backstage pass i want you to come do yeah, the yeah, episode yeah. with me tomorrow just so joe hears me say fuck yeah. fauci that's enough to get him from swallowing a bottle of Tylenol. Which I, I think I don't even think I don't even think Joe himself would say that. That's what's funny about it no. is that like, but I, I I found it all to be very. It was just very interesting. I'm glad we went, but I I do think that it's like this like, it's just the the lack of you can't bill that as comedy. No, I mean, well, you can It's. They they it was smart to bill it as oh, of comedy. course no I agree yeah no I'd agree I would agree I mean it, it it's very similar or it reminds me a lot of L Ron Hubbard and Scientology where like you know what is it about L Ron Hubbard that got him to have millions of of admirers yeah. and you know amass hundreds of millions of dollars like why do people care when everyone says he's an awful writer every one of his books is terrible. You know, it's all fake bullshit. Yeah. It's, you know, but like, what is it? But he's also like, yeah, I'm also fucking started a religion. Yeah. You know? And Joe did the same thing. Yeah. No, he did. He just has, he, he tapped into this one thing that he saw. He saw, instead of being the best stand up comedian in the world or the best podcast in the world, 
He saw a hole in the market. He saw an opportunity for a lot of people who were angry and pissed off who were just like him. And they needed a leader. And he, he stepped in and he is far from a good leader. He's far from a perfect leader. But also compared to the competition, he's number yeah, one. So he's got. number one. That's what it is. Well, and we, we didn't even talk about his outfit. Because I, you know, <laughs> that's kind of what you guys come to How Long Gone for, of course. He was, he came out. I, I, Fit check. This might have been the most the shocking panties. part. He was wearing some rock star skinnies. Okay, so at the bottom, we'll start at the bottom. He had some some like Jordans on, some Dunks or Jordans, like some like yeah, of, you know, some some like black and silver Jordan, you no know, uptown Dunks. Yeah, like regular Nikes, not for sport. Mm-hmm. And then some the pa- kind of shoes a Filipino nurse would wear, painted on. And he's, what kind, what's the brand of denim? Do you think? I honestly, it, it was regular, just a normal standard wash. Blue yeah, but, but I bet it, but I bet a guy like that just because he's so rich. Custom. No, I bet a stylist buys it for him, and it's definitely like some designer shit that's expensive. It honestly could have been a Miri. It could have been regular Amiri's. Rock and Republic. Yeah, it could be regular like jeans. But it's probably like, Amiri's or something. Like yeah, because they're like expensive, and they're like a stylist is like here, put these on because they were very tight. They were they were very even very nothing tight. to the imagination. And and Joe's not a little guy. I mean, he's a little guy, but he's a he's a meatball. Yeah, he's he's not vertically impressive but horizontally he's wide body and then he was wearing this black button hung like a cashew though button down shirt that's a nick kroll reference and it's a it's a button he's wearing a button down shirt and it's like like a blouse it's it's blousian it was a little too long and a little too silky our seats weren't good enough to see whether or not the buttons were mother of pearl yeah but they were just about (laughs) it was just the outfit Everything about it was very strange. And we were talking about this on the way home about how comedians just like, why can't a comedian just put on a t-shirt and jeans? Why does everybody have to be like, have a look mm-hmm. and it be bad? And the look is rarely what you want it to be. I, honestly, for a special, I kind of want you to look a little schlubby. Agreed. Like Aziz didn't have to wear that weird beanie. Well, that beanie was probably Elder Statesman set him back 900, but you yeah, know, he's not above that. I'm rich. Yeah, I mean, I think that Every comedian feels like I got to be wearing shoes that are brand new when I go out on stage. It's good. Well, there's a problem in the comedy world where you ain't Cedric the Entertainer, bro. There's a there's a sneakerhead crossover. Mm-hmm. I watched that Paul Verzi. I listened to Paul Verzi and something. He's all he's talking about is how he buys three Jordans every time he leaves the house. And his like wife's mad at him. Mm-hmm. Canceled Delia Yeezys. Fucking Joe Rogan's wearing fucking Jordan ones. Uh-huh. Like it's very strange. It makes sense. You have disposable income, yeah, it's true. and you have the mental and emotional growth of a nineteen-year-old. Yeah, it's true. Let's that's, go. That's a good point. But I, I, I mean, the we didn't even go do anything after Rogan because we were so spun out. Yeah, I, I mean, needed time the, to the process. The size of his head was so large too. Yeah, I mean, it, it, he looked when when he had the he had the blouse and the blouse was pretty big cuz he's a buff guy. Yeah, his chest is he's wide. So he's wearing a shirt like his shirt size is probably the same as I yeah, yeah, yeah. as I wear. And yeah. his in his you know like if I'm wearing like a 34 38 jean, he's wearing you know, he's wearing a 34 24 mm-hmm. jean, you know. <laughs> Like Rogan he, had on he, the thirty four twenty four seven for all mankind. I don't know if Eminem does black and on orange colors for Halloween, but he looked like a black Eminem. Yeah, he did. Black on top, skinny little legs, big head. You're right. He, he looked did. like um. He looked like an Eminem. Like Aretha Franklin just came off stage, and I could finally untuck this shirt, y'all. <laughs> no, the shirt was hitting the knee. But when you wear when you wear the skinny painted on jeans, and then you have this huge barrel chest. It creates a lot of distance in between the ch- the in the stomach area and down. There's it's almost like a sheet, like a ghost sheet. So there's so much. It's it, the proportions of his body are so bad that he had to become a comedian, or else he was never gonna. <laughs> it was never gonna happen for him. You're right. You're right. I just I don't know, man. I, in the, I'm in the opener. Hans Kim, who is one of the most racist comedians i've ever seen in my life but he is asian so he can he, he but can your say theory things. is your theory is that rogan has, has him open because he knows his crowd will like it and he can get away with it because he's asian look when you when you're when you're the godfather you have your foot soldiers you have your capos you have your shooters 
I have, you know, every rapper has, I got my little shooters. They're 16 year old, 19 year old kids. They have nothing to lose. All they want to do is be me when they grow up Mm -hmm. and they will do anything I want them to do. Even some dirty work. Mm -hmm. I need you to go take care of something. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Hey, I'm, I have $700 billion. I'm constantly being canceled. The news talks about me every day. I'm, my career is hanging on. It's not hanging on by a thread, but you know, I'm, I'm flirting with cancellation on a daily basis. I can't say the things that I feel inside of my head. I can't say the locker room talk that I say around my friends publicly. So I'm going to hire a person of color who has no problem saying some crazy shit because my audience you know, it's like it's like the tiger cage. I'm going to be feeding them some pretty good, you know, ham sandwich slices, some deli meat, but they really want that raw steak. But I just don't know if that. I wonder if that guy. What's his name again? Hans Kim. <laughs> okay, if Hans, that sounds German. <laughs> he was Asian. I saw him. If if Hans Hans does sound German and Kim does sound Asian. If Hans is like, do you think his material is different? I think anyone who opens for Rogan, you you have to change your material. And I think it's sort of understood and that that's how it's going to be kind of thing. And it's a, it's the cost of doing business. If you want to come on this show and open for me in front of this crowd, you're going to have to adjust some of your material. And yeah. you don't have to change your act, but like let's say you got 100 jokes in your arsenal. You know, these 10 that you don't really do in Venice Beach and Highland Park. And, those are going to kill. And Gowanus. Yeah, let's pull those in. Pull those out for when we're doing Albuquerque on a Monday yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, you know, no one's, your normal fans aren't going to hear you say a few, mm, yeah. you know, kind of things. Yeah, it was worse than I could have ever imagined. <laughs> so deeply unfunny. Yeah, the, it, it is a trend that I think is going to become a lot more popular where the powerful, powerful rich whitey is going to employ minorities, people of color, gay people, trans people, whatever, you know, anyone who's not a straight white person, they're going to employ these people and they're going to do, they're going to say the things that they can't say. And I mean, it's not a bad idea. Whoever is paying Tim Dillon, you know, Tim Dillon is the same thing. You know, he's the perfect, like, hey, I'm gay. I can say all this insane shit. I'm gay and I'm fat. And I'm funny. Very. You know, like, hey, I'm funny. You're going to chuckle. I'm going to say some shit that most people can't get away with because I'm because I'm not a straight white guy. I just. And I'm going to do the dirty work. 